Hey friends. So I, um, once again, have been having one of those experiences where I'm, I'm parenting, I'm working with Annalise, and all of a sudden <laughs> I hear myself saying something that is actually a lesson that I could take to heart <laughs> as much as she could. Um, and it's really interesting, you know, because I'm, I'm still sort of loosely making progress uh, on this on this book called Positive Discipline about how to create basically like a healthy structure for, for kids, healthy boundaries, healthy ways of getting their needs met so that they don't have to um, use these strategies that are ultimately, you know, both problematic and also not effective for them. So, so, but I, but I, but this is kind of an independent uh, thing. I was talking to her, I think it was like bedtime, maybe a day or two ago. And I forget how it came up. Might've been cause she, oh, I remember what it was. She was feeling something that was annoying her. Like she had something, like something in her sinuses was kind of like stuck. And I, and, and it was, it was gonna, it was one of those things where it was like, oh my God, her blowing her nose might be the thing that means she goes to bed an hour earlier because if she can get rid of this discomfort, she'll actually go to sleep instead of sitting here talking about how she's uncomfortable. Didn't ultimately happen that way. But we gave us a chance. At some point I started talking about directing our attention and where we put our attention determines how we feel, determines what we're thinking about. It sort of, it's everything. Attention is everything. Where we put our attention determines our life, basically. And we start, and so we started talking about this and she, we, we talked about, she had been right before bedtime, she'd been walking over to get a book in the other side of her room and like stubbed her toe on the rocking chair. And so, uh, I pointed out, like, when you stubbed your toe, your attention goes to your toe pretty quick, doesn't it? You don't really have to try to put it there. It just gets grabbed. Your attention gets grabbed. Pain will grab your attention. Talked about that. And then we talked about, you know, some of the kind of fine-tuned attention direction stuff that you have to do to play an instrument, play violin. She's, she's uh, learning that instrument right now, and it's... Um, I mean, talk about focus, talk about attention. Pretty epic what, it, what what's required of that, especially of a, of a young person. But, but the lesson goes obviously way beyond any, any of those individual um, activities. And, it, and it's something that, I, I, again, the reason why it struck me was because I heard myself saying it and sort of riffing on it with her as, as a, you know, um, for her, it's kind of a new idea to think about attention as an entity, as a th and not an entity really, but an energy or a you know attention as the direction of, of of focus of consciousness, as separate from the things that our attention is on, because a lot of times, you know, at at that age her attention is just being drawn by stuff. It's just being grabbed by uh, whatever's in her environment. And so the notion that like, wait a minute, you mean I can withdraw my attention from something and put it over here? Now she does this fluently <laughs> when she's trying not to hear something that her parents are saying or when she has something that she's, you know, being encouraged to do and has something else that she'd really like to do. Um, it's not that this is a skill that she can't execute. It's just that an awareness of the skill and a, and a, and a kind of agency over, over, over what that means in terms of her own empowerment and how to really utilize that somewhat incredible human capacity um, 
that is kind of new for her to think of it in those terms. And, but again, as even as I say, it's something new for her or something that she's at least um, in, the, in the beginning stages of learning about is also something I feel like I'm in the beginning stages of learning about. You know, I, there's a level on which this is very clear to me and very um, obviously, you know, kind of, um, it's not unfamiliar. But there's also a level on which when I get hooked by one of my own patterns, by one of my particularly compulsive, particularly addictive patterns, it arises as, a, as, a, as an epiphany to consider the fact that I could withdraw my attention from something and put it somewhere else that might be more effective or more productive or more wholesome, you know, more connected. And, and so this process of being in dialogue with, with Annalise and this kind of um, you know, watching her appreciate the sort of like, because I could tell that that with that as I was explaining it, she was kind of going, oh, like, okay, attention, like that's, you're right, it is, it's my attention, oh, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's a vague concept, I think, still, but, but I could tell it was going in, and I could tell she was kind of like, oh, this is really kind of cool. Like she, it, there was a little spark of something in her as I was explaining this, and it it really did give her a um, a, a form of inspiration to to consider this and to and to and to begin to just toy with it in a very simple kind of way. And for me, what this also kind of flags. I mean, again, I've spoken probably at, at, at infinitum on this post about meditation and the you know meditation as the practice essentially of coming to stillness coming to silence and really just in a very simple way deciding to put our attention on a certain thing to, to making it making a conscious choice about what we're doing with our attention and and, uh, you know, the whole reason for having a practice like meditation is that we, in the course of life, in the course of a, the, the kinds of lives that a lot of us have, where it feels like there's a million things happening, we're going a mile a minute, that, that moment, that kind of air gap, that space between the activity of my life and the consciousness, the awareness, the observing consciousness of, of our life can get closed. That space can kind of disappear and all of a sudden we're in it. We're just in the we're in the the, the vortex of it. Um and so, so again, I you know, uh, I feel like I'm pitching meditation, which I am, but not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 describing what it has done for me. And I'm and I'm and I'm coming back to I think this just this fundamental principle of what we do with our attention determines our life. What we put our attention on literally equals our life. There's nothing else that that determines our life more than where we put our attention. You know. It, it understanding the sort of enormity of that power it's 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 the form of transcendence or a form of agency free will if we have free will in anything It manifests via our chosen
locus of attention. And I think You know, maybe one of the reasons this is striking me is because, um, you know, one of the things that I thought to myself as I was, I didn't actually say this to Annalise, but it, but it sort of was evoked by the conversation, is that if we, ha if we really grasp that our attention determines everything and that we have control over our attention, then we can learn anything we want to learn and we can do anything we want to do. Attention, controlling our attention is freedom. It's, and there's no other, there is no higher form of freedom. This is something that you can do even in a prison cell. I mean, this is where you, you look at, you know, some of the world's great heroes like Nelson Mandela, who's imprisoned for years and years and years. But what did he do with his attention during that time? That allowed him to walk out of prison and then be who he was and and literally change the face of the earth you know there's a kind of there's a massive power to this and i think ultimately it's also very um it's very autonomous we don't we don't require circumstances or other people's support, or I mean, we not that we not saying that we don't require the other people's support ever, but I'm saying our capacity to utilize our attention and our capacity to determine where we put it is not contingent upon anything outside ourselves. So, you know, this is why this is why Sadhguru likes to talk about you know if someone makes you angry, you chose to be angry. Don't, he said, people, you can't control the whole world, right? You can't control everything that happens in, outside it, outside of you. But what happens inside of you, you should be in control of, right? So our emotions, our thoughts, our impulses, those are things that we actually do have control over, whether we exercise that control or not. And it really comes down to it really comes down to attention. It comes down to that. It comes down to this. <sighs> uniquely human capacity. And I think in teaching this or in, in beginning to impart this to Annalise, it both inspired me and also reminded me. <laughs> reminded me that the ways in which I look complain that my attention's getting drawn or whatever are the ways in which I'm still working on my own on my own freedom I'm still building my own capacity for freedom and my own my own real autonomy and choice as a human being so so yeah attention is everything that's what I that's what I got today <laughs> thanks for watching folks appreciate you have a wonderful day I'll see you tomorrow.